Hi and welcome to yet another episode of All About Code. My name is Till and today I'd like to present to you the new HTML static control for XPress Plus Plus 2.0. The HTML static control basically provides a rectangle on the screen. A rectangle that you can use for displaying static content defined using HTML and CSS. This could be, for example, one or more lines or formatted text, possibly involving images or icons. It could be a tabular data. Basically, all the areas you're currently using an XPP static object for in your application are potential use cases for the HTML static control. However, the advantage here is that HTML and CSS as a, a declarative language is much easier to use and more powerful than having to express everything in code. Now I'd like to show you some examples that should give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. First of all, the HTML static control, just like uh, all the controls that we've re recently made available, was released as a so-called asset. An asset is a ready-to-use software component that you can grab and plug into your project directly from within the XSpace++ workbench. In order to add an HTML static control to your project, all you need to do is to select the corresponding target in the project manager, right-click it with the mouse and select the Manage Assets menu item. This brings up the asset browser that lists all the assets that are installed on your development machine. And in this case, of course, what I do is to select the static control of the HTML and CSS. I press the Add button, close the browser, and what has just happened is that the system automatically copied and installed all the files that make up the asset directly into your project. And now that the HTML static control is available, let's take a look at how it's being used in code. These three lines of code here, they create an HTML static object and put it on the current form. As you can see, what you need to do is to get a reference to an XPP HTML static object. This is in this line here. Assign it a piece of HTML markup and finally, call its create method, which allocates resource it and it brings uh, the object up on the screen. In this case, what I do is um, in the HTML markup, I define two lines of text. In the first line, we have the word age, which is to be printed in bold using those B tags here. And in the second line, after the line break, um, I define some uh, supplemental information how old the person is in years. So if I compile and run this code here, what I get is this. What you see here is the default appearance of an XPP HTML static control object. It uses uh, the system's accent colors, a set of matching borders around it, and it uses uh, the system font for uh, printing the text. If you wanted to change uh, the control's appearance, what you needed to do is to change either the HTML markup, which is uh, the data, or the CSS style sheet, which is uh, the formatting. And this is because, and this is uh, the bad news, the HTML static control does not support any of the standard interfaces that you know for setting things like uh, background colors, fonts, and stuff like this. This control solely is about displaying HTML and CSS, plain and simple. In the next example that I'd like to show you, 
I've modified the HTML and the styling a bit in order to make things look a little more beautiful. At first glance, uh, things appear to be the same as before. I define two lines of text, the word age printed in bold, followed by a line break, and uh, another line of text, how old the person is in years. However, in this example, I'm using an image tag, which tells the HTML static object uh, to display an image um, alongside with the text. And I also added in this example a CSS styling section, which contains styling rules for the individual HTML element displayed in uh, in the HTML static object. For example, uh, for the div container which uh, surrounds uh, the text, uh, I set a specific background color, which in this case um, uh, is a colored gradient, a shade running from blue to white. I added padding for offsetting uh, the text a bit uh, from the object's borders. I changed the font size, I added underlining. All these um, are examples for CSS styling rules that you can use um, and define in the CSX section for changing the objects, uh, for changing the object's appearance on the screen. So if I compile and run this code, the HTML static object looks like this. Here we have our image, we have uh, a changed background, we've added padding to uh, reposition uh, the text a bit inside the object. All these are examples for um, applying styling to um, a piece of HTML markup. In the next example, I'd like to take a closer look at image handling and resource management in general. The basic procedure is the same as before. I'm getting a reference to an XPP HTML static object. I assign it a piece of HTML markup and I call the object's create method to allocate resources and bring it up on the screen. In the HTML markup, I use an image tag and specifically the tag source attribute to specify a file that I want the XPP HTML static control to load from disk for me and to display on the screen. In this example, the file resides on the current drive in the current folder and it's named cry.jpg. If I now run this example, here we see our HTML static object with the cry.jpg file displayed inside it. Obviously, this approach requires you to package and deploy your application in a way that the individual image files are accessible to the HTML static objects you are using on your forms. However, this is just one way to do it. The HTML static control class also supports loading images from the application's resource instead of loading them from disk. In order to compile a resource such as an image into the application's binary, what you need to do, of course, is to include a .rc file with your project in which you define all those resources. In this example, we use the same, Im same image as before, the cry.jpg file. So, in order to have the HTML static control load and uh, display this image from the application's resource, uh, we need to tell uh, the control um, how to specifically it should go look and find this resource. And we do this by using the WASP pseudo protocol, which tells that the control instead of loading a file, that this time it should try loading a resource.
from the resource that is included in the application's binary, not in a separate DAL, but um, in the .exe file of the application itself. And that the image is defined in a resource section labeled JPEG. The resource's name is defined at the last position here, and it's my image. You probably know that it's possible uh, to define the same resource in different language flavors. You can have different images, for example, with the same resource name for the English language, for the German language, for French, and so on. Um, in this example, however, however, we are not um, interested in language distinction. So this is why we are using the neutral keyword here. So if we now run it, run this example, uh, we get the same result, of course, but <coughs> at this time, the image is not loaded from disk, but uh, from the application itself. So if you deploy this application, all you need to deploy um, is uh, the .exe file of the application itself and no separate image, uh, image files anymore. As you can see, the HTML static control is very flexible. It's perfect for creating information areas, a panel or section headers, application bias, or for usage as a parent object providing a styled background for its child controls. Uh, technically, the HTML static control is a subclass of the XPP static class and it uses the owner drawing feature in conjunction with the XPP HTML style class for creating its on-screen representation. The control is therefore yet another example for using the WebRI for creating rich and beautiful on-screen content. I hope you've enjoyed this show. Please stay tuned for other videos from Alaska Software.